So when looking at the Panther Intersect, this is a short and basic animation to just to show you where all the nuts and bolts fit. Uh, these will most likely come pretty much pre-assembled, uh, but at least with this you can see what, what goes where. There's four wheels at each corner. Uh, they're uh, specially made um, at and by Log Logic. And then you can notice the M brackets and the clamps. Um, these are shared with the bigger Panther mills. Where the bar fits onto that long post there, uh, instead of two nuts, you will have one of the big uh, disc style washers to spread the load on the bar. This gives a really good clamp onto the bar as well as distributing the weight and it help encourages bar stiffness all the way down the bar with how we do it. So that then slots onto the, onto the frame there and then you've got the height measurement and the end clamps and then you're ready to go. So you get a square with the Panther Intersect and it's important to mark the two inside lines and the top line. And you'll see the top line with those little divots with the different numbered um, gaps. The inside lines are actually going to be the lines you'll be cutting to. When you know which hole you're going into, you can pilot them, which then makes it easier to fit the actual main mill to, which we're just looking at here you now. Your panther set square up. <clears throat> you position it by the inside lines are going to be where you finish cutting. So it's not the outside. This is where you're going to finish. This is going to be your very top cut up here, and this is going to be your end side cut here. Now that's how you position it. After you've drawn these two inside lines, draw across the top into these little divots here, all the way along the end to this little divot here. And you've got one, two, three, four, and five, you'll see there. You're only gonna be using one of the holes. Um, the different uh, numbers here give you different, a different range of how the mill will cut, how high above the log. So you can mark them up as well, with, preferably with a thicker pencil than I've got. <clears throat> so most of the time the positions you'll be in are going to be two and three. And it's that point just there, that little right angle at the tip that you want to get the screws in. So what I've done is I've put a screw in there and I've put a screw in there. So at least I know that they'll locate in those holes when I want them to. And then this far screw can just go in and stay in there. Then I'm going to offer up my panther mill. Now you notice that if I offer that up there, I can see that it's likely to be number two hole. So that's number two. So you've got one, two, three, four, five here. So that's in number two there. And I can see that that will work there as far as the However, say for instance, say for an argument's sake, you wanted there was too many lumps on the log in this area and you needed the whole system higher, then you'd be more likely to go in number three. So that goes up to number three. That's number four. Number three, and then you'll find, you can see, you can put in number three. And then if it's still not high enough, you can go up to number four. So each time you're going up a hole, most of the time two will do it. We found that most dogs two will do it. It's just if you've got a particularly uh, lumpy log that you'll need to do um, some of the other holes. So what I'll do is now that I know I've already got um, number two located in there, if I just line that up and then drill, drill him in. So I've unscrewed that. So this is now gonna come up to number three. And I've already piloted it there, remember, point number three. So let's screw it in there. So I can see we're going to make number three. So I'll take out the one that's resting on. And it's, you're just going to make sure that the rails are in line with the log. And you can see we're just about getting to number three, three holes here. That I'm looking down the rails I can see they're twisted and that needs to be lifted up to there and I know I'm going in number three it's going to rest on number three 
So if I put that there, and now that I look down at it, that doesn't look too bad to me at so all. We've got uh, hole number three engaged. So we need to square the rails up and we just do that by eye. So I can see that that is square by just taking a look back. I'm going to use one of these lower screws now. You can see I've already, um, we've done this a couple of times. Um, and I'm going to pin it so I know. So I'm now going to have a look and see, have I got that right? Is it all square? And I can see actually, yeah, I've got that square. If I stand up and look sideways at it, I can tell as well. If you don't get that bit right, then you can always take that screw out and then use one of these holes here. It doesn't have to be that hole. But once you have got that right, you can see I've uh, done a couple of holes here. One, two, three. You want to screw in there so that's resting on it and you'll see why later. So already now you've got your rails on there. Now just make sure they're all square and in line with the log. And we're going the right way. So we're just tightening, uh, tightening the brackets on now. So yeah, that's those two and then we'll do the, do the far end too. First of all, you want to put in your screw hole here because this is this is what holds this side up and gives it stability. It can go in any of the holes here. I tend to give it a tiny bit of upward pressure. And there we go. And then that can be tightened on there. This bracket can be tightened on. It's just where that's tapered, that gives that stability there as well. So you'll find now the actual whole set of frame really is absolutely solid on the, on top of the log. Getting ready to do the vertical cut. You can adjust the, uh, where the bar lies there quite easily. You can, you can do it by measure, we can do it by eye. And you can see that little stop and all of this top post slides in and out. You do that by adjusting the end clamp handle. At the other end, you get the clamp, so it's just gripping it, just enough to hold it steady, but not so it doesn't, so it impedes the in and out of the post there. And then you can do that first vertical cut wherever you like. So when setting up the intersect on your rails, be aware that um, these, these wheels have little slots underneath, so, so there's adjustment on it. So if you slacken off um, these bolts here on all four wheels and pull that black bracket in so you know it's square, tighten up this one on the left, tighten that one on the right and then come over to here and then tighten up these wheels. Push the, push the wheels in, into um, the frame so you know then that it's all tight and you should find that you get a lovely, it's all lovely and smooth up and down the rails but there's, there's no movement anywhere really at all. Um, as far as uh, you can then set the set the bottom of the uh, stop here to hole number three on the outside and you should then find up find out that that line that you drew you know, we, we drew those lines to start with that then lines up with that line there and you can see as well that we put got our main pivot point there number three locks it down there and this is the stop for when we roll the mill over so there we are pretty much all ready to go. We're friending. So you can see I've just done a little experimental cut here. And the good thing with this system is, is that by slacking off, slacking off this handle here, the whole system slides in and out. So you can effectively slide back in and out. Those, those nuts there want to be tight enough so that there's not too much play. But of course, you'd still you still need to have this freely moving in and out. You probably got the reflection tight as it is, so. but it does give you. I mean, so I've just done that cut cut there. You can move that in, and you I could take another cut there and create another plank. In fact, we could we could do that just to 
just to just to do it anyway so we'll, we'll cut a plank off but the next cut we do will be pretty much on this line these these planks we're taking off now are sort of extra <laughs> see there we've cut what a five mil board on the vertical and you look down it is uh, just to be able to do that I think with a chainsaw mill is quite impressive really and it's actually quite it's very even I mean it's even front and back not wedge shaped or anything like that so it shows and that's on the vertical that's pretty impressive really isn't it Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll undo this strap and then I'll come round to the back here. Now that's, um, you can see we've lowered the, the mill down, we've taken away the middle, middle bracket because it was getting in the way. You've got your, that's actually a stop. So. Do not take that one off, but do take this one off here. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. You can probably stay there, Graham. As well. I'll take that bottom one off. And then here's where the sort of the magic happens, because now this rotates up and over, and you'll see it will hit those stops. That's exactly 90 degrees for other cut. And now what I will do is put the screw in here. Oh, I've done that a very good job. So move that back again to where it was, up to that stop. And I'll use uh, this one here. But I want to come to the top of the hole, don't I? To... That's better. So you pull that into there and the same the other side. So now we've, we've got to fix the middle bracket, but you can see now we're going to be all ready for our horizontal cutting. It's, it's flipped up and gone exactly 90 degrees. So you can say that, you know, because of the shape of this log, we've taken this off. Yeah, but I think, I think you'd always do that, Marcus. Yeah. I think you'd always do that. Yeah, yeah because it, I mean, that takes seconds to put back on. It, it sort of, it means you'll always be right down on top mm. of the log. Yeah, that's true. You haven't got the balance on the side. Are you filming, Glenn? Yeah, so you, uh, put your bolts on there. And then what you're going to do now is you're going to tap that down while these are still slack. You can see, tap that down so it grips the log and then tighten them up. And down here, tighten this one up. So 
So, I'm just going to look down that now. Make sure there's no dip. Oh, he's lovely. Beautifully flat. And then the next thing is just to put a, a retaining screw into there. So now you'll find that that then stops any potential twisting of the rails. That's the actual log. It's on there, so the log's actually moving there. You're all set up then for doing your horizontal cutting. Okay. Okay. So uh, we've that just slides on there easy enough. You can see. Um, you want to have maybe a mill or a millimetre or two mil gap there. But this is where all, all we have diff the different holes and the complications to start with. When it does flip over, you'll find this skid comes up against this flat surface here. Uh, with the, uh, this is a, a beta model, but with the, with the production, we'll have a slightly longer post. So you will get a couple more inches down to here. And you start cutting the log from the bottom up. So I'll put this first cut in now. Um, we're going to use this as a demo log at the APF, so I'm not going to go right to the end of the log. Um, I'll probably go along about four foot, and then we're going to bring it up and do sequential cuts all the way to the top. Uh, you've got your measuring aid on the side here, um, which we'll show you later, which you can set, which set how high you want the mill to travel up and up each time, and how thick you want the logs. And it takes into account the kerf as well. it's in centimetres and inches I've just set it to two and a half inches and um, you've got a gap at the top there which allows for the kerf so all you have to do is set the scale loosen that up to the stop and tighten that again and then if you want to do another two and a half inch plank slide the scale back down ready and you're all ready to go and then when you come and have Big a look plank here, just ready to be there. produced. So as I say, I'm not going to go the full length because we're using this as our demo log. So we'll just go along a little bit. intersect and uh, and how it works um, no, that will come down onto that that only needs to rest on top of these flat you're not looking at getting it in the corner of these you're looking just to rest on the flat but you can sort of see how if I try and hold that there so when that comes over clonk and ready for your vertical 
uh, sorry, horizontal cutting. You can see how that just rotates. And believe me, that's exactly, you know, 90 degrees. I mean, I don't know if you can see down there. And it's exactly flat, absolutely exactly flat and exactly 90 degrees. Um, uh, on, on the vertical, let me show just on this board here, that's cutting on the vertical and that's an even 5mm board. So uh, that's, the, that's the idea. And again, you can sort of see, this is on hole number one because the top of the log is quite flat, but maybe the top of the log, if, you can't, if, it, if the log's not flat, then you'll need to go on to number two. But the, the lower the number, the deeper, um, the, the longer the vertical cut will go, the deeper, the, the longer, you know, the more the bottom you can do your horizontal cuts. So that you can just see there, rests on the left screw, you'd have had the other screws and right, and when you're ready to flip it over, you can see that comes up against the stop there.